Hi, I'm Elke Valovirta, and this one is something that you've been asked a lot for me to do. How to get Eddie Van Halen's guitar tone on Balance album. Let's listen to a song first that I wrote in the spirit of Balance album, and especially a track called Aftershock. And then I'm gonna show and tell you how you can achieve that tone. What did I use? What do I use? So, EVH Frankenstrat, completely stuck. Then to pedal board, and the only effect I used on the board was a bus flanger for the intro and those things in the verse. So that was before the amp. Then the signal goes to from the pedal board to KHG amp switcher. And I used two amps, 50 on 50 and Plexi, like what Ed used on the album. Then the signal goes back to KHE, then to Sandrox React IR, reactive load, where I don't have my signature IR, but I have a, an IR that comes with the device, which is a 4x12 Marshall with Celestin G12M20 speakers, which is pretty much a 20 watt greenback. And you probably know Eddie Eddie's signature EVH speaker is a Celestin 20 watt greenback, but just labeled, you know, the Frankenstein graphics. So, 1550 Marshall cab greenbacks, and that's it. Like I said, Ed used two amps on the album, the, the high gain stuff is with the 5150 and the low gainer stuff, vintage, vintage sounding stuff is with the plexi. And I use the plexi on the intro and the flanger. And then when the song kicked in, I use the 5150. No overdrives, nothing. But 
The thing is, what happens in the post after the amp. So let's go to the screen and I'll show you and I'll explain and you know what Ed used, what I used to achieve that pretty similar tone. Okay, so here's the session of the song, bass, drums, guitars. As you can see there's two guitar tracks but it's the one single performance you just saw. What I did, I did like Eddie says, I have an old guitar world here from 90, 90 something, Ed's interview. It's about the Balance album. Ed says, I have two Sir SM57s miking one cabinet. Pretty much everything was recorded with a 5150 amp, but I did use the old Marshall Super Lead head on about three tunes. The stuff that's more clean sounding like Aftershock was done with the Marshall. Why did he decide to use the Marshall again? Just to get a different sound. Even though, this is the interviewer asked, even though this record has a drier sound than for unlawful common knowledge, the guitars still have that chorusy shimmer that's become a staple of your sound lately. Do you double most of your rhythm tracks? No, not at all. But everything has the even tight harmonizer on it. The dry guitar signal is on the left and the duplicate sound that the even day even type generates is on the right. I barely use the harmonizer as an effect. It's just to split my stereo, it's just to split my guitar to sides of the stereo spectrum. I have it set to detune to 98, so it harmonizes just a little. And then when you start using your signal like this, and it's just maybe on 5150, but I forget. Okay, so I did that. <laughs> like Eddie said, guitar left here. Well, let's listen to the guitars a little bit. What I have on the guitar left, it's a Roland SDE 3000, what Ed has used, you know, pretty much all of his career, at least from the 80s. And it's set to pretty much like Ed has said his 398 milliseconds and yeah, so on. There's a picture of, of Ed's a live rig, so obviously I don't know if he used that in a studio, but I just used because it sounded pretty much like the album. So that's the only thing that's on a guitar left. A guitar left on its own, it sounds like this. I mean, it's the one guitar, but I, you know, divided that into two tracks, like Ed said on, on the interview. And then guitar right, it has a harmonizer set to 98. You can see here. It makes this blinking, but that's it doesn't change the values because that's this is even tight's plugin of the original harmonizer and the original harmonizer did that when it's in between like some values it just does that you know the, the screen so they they modeled that but it it's, it stays on 1998 pretty much what, what Ed used so th then that's on the on the right track of the guitar this is a classic model H 949 what Ed used a long time before he switched to H 3000 just an evol evolution of this, but uh, this is a great harmonizer. So that's guitar right. And then I have also the Roland SD3000, 
plugin by Nebrin Audio, and it sets a little bit longer delay time, a little bit different values, like Ed has said his. And the guitar left, it, it sounds like this. And both, and listen what happens when I take the harmonizer off from the right channel. Why it sounds so much wider? Because it's a different pitch, just a tiny amount that you don't hear that it's it's not in a perfect pitch, but our brain thinks because it's in a different pitch, so it you know our brain processes the signal like that it's wide. It's a little bit like chorus, but chorus does like uh, this harmonizer used this way. It's kind of like a, a static chorus in a way. That's how you do it. I mean, that's how I did it. And so these two tracks, guitar left and guitar right, these are mono tracks. And this has this setup and the guitar left has this delay, two different delays. So that also creates the space. What you can hear when you, when you listen to the album, especially on headphones, there is this space. On some songs, the guitar is more towards the left. On some, it, it comes, you know, uh, in equal volume on, on both channels. I had it kind of like it's pretty much the same, but the, the harmonizer is a little bit, so it's more towards the left, like on, on most songs on the album. And then these two delays, which create this kind of space. Check out what happens when I disengage the delays. <laughs> Okay, so this is what's on these two mono tracks. And again, same single performance. I just recorded the single performance to two tracks. Then what I have in the rhythm bus, I have a little bit of, a, this is my preset called guitar room. It's pretty much, much a, uh, kind of like a room reverb. It doesn't do much, but it kind of glues everything together. Listen. It's very subtle, but in the full context, it kind of glues this. So it's, it's like this big one guitar sound. And I have one other thing in there, because when I listened to the album, the songs, especially the Amsterdam, I felt like there was kind of like chorus thing also. You know, there was the harmonizer, but also I heard kind of like a a little bit coarse, probably what mixing engineer might have added. Well, anyways, what I did, I added Dimension D chorus, because I have a Dimension D, it's a classic 90, 80s chorus effect, what's been used on bass, drums, I use it on bass pretty much always, a little bit on every guitar, it just, when, it, when you use it, use it subtly, it just makes it a little bit more wider. I have blended that in so you can see here. Let's listen what happens when I check it out. So it again widens the guitar sound a bit. So then now it's like a full big sound and one guitar, but it sounds like it's double because of the right channel has the harmonizer on it 
and because of the little bit different delays and then a little bit of a room reverb and a tiny amount, I've landed a tiny amount of that Dimension D stereo chorus in there. So the rhythm guitar, this bass kind of glues this whole thing together. Obviously, I wasn't in the studio when they <laughs> recorded the album and I definitely didn't mix the album, but to me this is pretty close to the to the tone and it makes you know sense use a harmonizer to you know di divide the the signal okay so this is not right now like in the DAW because I recorded a dry sound what if you want to create this like live well <laughs> that's easier said than <laughs> done Ed used a I have a it's actually here. This is from uh, 90, 92. This is from a uh, for unlawful kind of knowledge tour. But he used pretty much a similar rig on on balance tour. So how how Ed Ed did Ed did this live? So uh, the picture. So first it's wireless. Then two out from the wires. One goes to Alex von Halen here, which is completely dry, no effects, and he, he likes to listen it just bone dry with two 2x12 two cabinets. Then the signal goes to this Bradshaw switcher, and this Phase 90 bus, SD1, yeah, SD1, he used, he used to use that, you know, kind of boost a little bit, the sound, if he, you know, felt. Wahwa and OZ2, these are before the amp, but in this diagram it's, it's a little bit, but these are pre-FX, like what I have here on, on my pedal board, wah, flanger, you know, phaser, and so on. And then these, even tight, the two roll lines, the Lexicon PCM70, which he used only for Cathedral, they are like a kind of a post effects. Okay, so then the signal from the Bradshaw switcher, it goes to the amp, and from the amp out, it goes to dummy load, speaker simulator, kind of what I have here. This is a reactive load. Why? Because the power from the speaker out, it's like, there's a lot of power. So this device changes that speaker line, speaker level signal to line level signal, like what this does. The speaker cables from my amps goes to this, and then this takes the heat, it's acting as a reactive load, load, it changes the signal to line level signal, and then it goes to my audio interface, and then I can record and add those harmonizer and post effects. It pretty much recreates this studio thing with his live rag. So, and then from the Palmer speaker simulator, one goes throughout, like I have here, I have a cable going to the cabinet, but this has also an attenuator, so I can actually control the volume. So the dry sound pretty much comes, would come from there. Cool. Then the line level out now, because now it's been transformed from speaker level to line level. It goes to these post effects, the Eventide, Roland and Lexicon. What I have here on the screen like this. And you could use, because why before Edge switched to H3000, he used two of these older H949s to split the signal in stereo, to stereo. So this is also one way to do that. So you use two of these and then it, it splits the signal. And picture there as Edge's old rigs, you can see he has two of these H949s, but the H3000 does the thing where with this H949 you needed two, but with H3000 you, you know, need only one. And even type makes a plugging of the H3000. I tried that, but it's it's so there's so much stuff. It's pretty complicated. It's quite expensive because I only wanted to have the harmonizer, and this was a lot cheaper. And this is kind of the OG. And this I actually like the interface and the I actually like the sound a bit more of this and the H3, H3000 plugging. Okay, then, obviously, because now it's line level signal, 
and he, he wants the, the effects to come out from the cabinet, so he needs something to power that signal again. So he uses H and H power amps, solid state power amps, which powers the affected signals and then they go to left and right. So this is the so-called wet dry wet rig. And then let me let me do it here in door. So now what I had, I, I used these two guitar tracks. Let's put it like this. Okay, how can we do this, simulate the, the live setting here, if we want to have a dry signal? Well, guitar sender, what I have here. Like a sound engineer would, would mix. These are the guitar left and right, the affected, this is the dry. Dry sender, and what I have here now is the... <laughs> Now I set it this to right to 98 and the left to, you know, 0 0.2. I don't know if Ed did that, but it's, it sounds pretty cool to me. with the flanger. So now we have the kind of the dry signal. Well it's not completely dry because it's harmonized and then if we lift this guitar left and a guitar right now the center signal I took off the harmonizer now it's it's dry And then this. These have now the delay and let's add actually harmonizer. Let's put this on, this left channel. Live left. Okay, so now I have two of these old age 949s set a little bit different values on left and right. And the delays. So this is the right, this is the left. And the center is dry. And if you've seen Van Halen live, sometimes those delays come really like, whoa, loud and stuff. So I think how they do it, the sound engineer just... back to rhythm. So that's kind of like wet, dry wet rig here. Center, nothing, just a dry guitar and left and right. Little different delay time settings, different harmonizer settings and you get a huge sound. You can use other plugins as well for the harmonizer. I mean what I've used a lot, I actually just bought these, these Eventide things just a while ago, but what I've used a lot is a uh, Overlord THU. It comes with uh, with this micro pitch pitch shifter. I have just uh, here. It's pretty much the Eventide 3000 or this. It's a harmonizer. It looks really simple, but it's actually there's the fine tune, the pitch, then mix level. What you have here, 
and uh, well uh, mix like how much effective signal and the level out here. So it's just basically three controls and these are the controls what I pretty much use. This sounds a little bit brighter so I guess this is a little bit to me this was a little bit closer to H3000. This sounds a little bit more windage this H949 kinda. If you have this it works just fine the micro pitch and the THU it has also the delays like let's say because I have I've done a kind of presets well uh, they are, these are based on Michael Neal says big hairy guitar presets so I tweak them a little but here I have this FU crunch it's pretty much just, this is stereo delay so this kind of mimics these two delays how Ed used them and then the micro pitch and a little bit reverse so you can do a lot with this THU so Live sound, there's one dry center, two wets, left, right. And according to Ed's interview, the, the balance album sound was dry left. By that I guess he means without an even tide and even tide on the right because there is definitely delays and reverbs going on. So left, only the delay, guitar right, harmonizer, a little bit different delay. Okay, so that's way you do it. And regarding the amps and the other effects on the album, that's clearly Flanger in the beginning of Don't Tell Me and, and the, the Aftershock I played and, and, and Sawa and stuff. So amp-wise, you know, if you have a Plexi or a plug-in of Plexi or 5150 or plug-in, you can't go wrong. And how to get this widespread, it's, it's the post effects thing. Hey, hopefully you found this interesting and informative. Thanks for watching. If you like, please hit the subscribe and bell button so you don't miss any videos. Until next time, take care. All the best. Bye.